Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan and this is a project to build a Chamberlain Racing Dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book, illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we're hoping to finish cutting the gains in the shear strakes and uh, yeah, possibly get one on the boat. I'm not sure if we'll get any nails in it, but at least fit it and see how it looks. Um, yeah, let's get out there and get to it. So it's really just been one gray day after another. Um, this whole week since, uh, well, even before Christmas, I was thinking about, oh, maybe I'll put the boat in for Christmas uh, week, and I was, uh, you know, up to, uh, up to and including, um, New Year's, but, uh, I'm pretty glad that I didn't, because, now it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been freezing cold, but it's been snowing and freezing rain. And then just the days that it hasn't been that, it's just been sprinkling, uh, sort of wet all day. So I definitely didn't miss out on anything. All right. So we got the, the uh, next plank up on the bench. And we will be, uh, cutting the gain. The, uh, plank that we have cut is on the floor. The gain is already in that, and that is for the starboard side. So this is the port side. We're going to be cutting it in this, in this face. Because, and, uh, I'm at the back of the shop with the bow of the boat. On the plank just because this is the orientation that allows me to cut the gain with the gain facing up and outward on the bench uh, so once I flip this over so flip it like this and then bring it like this that face will be uh, will be up against the the bow where the gain needs to be so anyway yeah let's uh let's get to it and get going from the end, six inches, whatever. However, wherever you think it's going to actually land on the stem is kind of where you want to draw it out and then give yourself a few inches to play with beyond that. sees the boat in a good way, you know, as long as it interacts with the shape of the hull in a good way, then, you know, it's, uh, the precision of it, one way or another, it isn't as important, you know, it's, uh, kind of more like weaving a basket than it is like, uh, building an engine, you know, we're not dealing with any sort of, uh, except for keeping the ocean out, I guess there's some compression, uh, fittings there, you know, you gotta fit one piece of wood against the other piece of wood to keep out whatever PSI the, uh, 
the displacement of the boat is, but uh, beyond that, it's not like a piston that has to fit perfectly in a cylinder of an engine. You know, it's more like a basket that's going to do its job no matter what, and it's just uh, sort of degrees of degrees of functionality as far as the shape goes. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so now I want to grab the, uh, the scribe. Height of the gain. I'll bring that right back to uh, right back to where the gain ends. Typically, it would be a, um, if I had the plank flat on the bench, which is what I do with boats where the planks aren't longer than my uh, planking bench, um, then I'd use a, a, a straight edge um, draw knife. Those work great for this, too. But there's a pretty straight edge on this uh on this little uh, little broad axe, mini broad axe, whatever it is, and it seems to be doing the trick just fine for taking off that. So the draw knife is for taking off the bulk of the wood for taking the deep cut, and then you go back over with it. Get right to the line with the uh, hand plane. So that worked well the way I wanted it to. I suppose if you were having uh, difficulty with the grain on this, you could cut back in the other direction. But uh, I find you seldom do when you're cutting cutting down with the curve of the plank, because um, you definitely don't want to go too deep into the grain on these. But uh, yeah usually works pretty well. I suppose if you had a, um, <clears throat> if you had an ads around and not the uh, broad axe, you could probably use an ads. Just push it along here too. Anything to uh, just remove more wood than I mean, you could do it with a plane. It just take longer.
this will do it. Oh, that's how I got my other light unplugged. Let's see if this does it well. Probably might. Yeah, because I need a little bit of light to see the uh, to see the scribe line because it's not a it's not like a marker line. It's a shadow line. And if there is no shadow, then I can't see it. would be right there. It's gonna But got it. Okay, so the plank that we just cut the gain on, I have uh, taken outside, spun around. So now it's the right end in. And uh, now what I want to do is get it on the boat so that I can um, fit it, get ready to nail it on the boat. I can feel where the uh, double starts on the next plank down, and I'm just bringing this plank down to that double.
here. Stern to pull this into the transom. I figure it's the fan is in the way. in there all right so um and it looks like uh, we're pretty good end time i'm trying to move the plank back as far as i can to uh leave as much and i just lifted it here to leave as much at the transom as i can and uh bring in and uh, so to bring this plank back as far as I can, because I want, I'm trying to get as wide as I can at the transom. And the more I slide the plank back, the wider it gets. So now with the plank pretty much in place, I can take off the soft tie I had on there. Planks on, as you could see, looking good back at the transom, and that uh, bottom edge comes in easily just with a little bit of pressure from my palm. Now up at the bow, we've got a little bit of trimming to do. You can see. Uh, We left the stem uncut up here. Now just looking at it, to me it's looking like I should have left more of the stem uncut. This line I drew, I probably should have drawn down here and had this taper out to right about here. Because then what I could do is I could put a saw on the top edge of this plank and saw in to the bevel and then cut that bevel to the height that this plank is going to be. Now it's, uh, you know, it's kind of neither here nor there, but uh, yeah, I missed that a bit. But um, 
we are still going to have to cut it back and this plank is coming up a little ways so there will be a bit of a cut to make there we'll see how deep it is but uh yeah let's mark that and cut it What I want to try to do is mark that at the angle that this uh, the top edge of this plank is coming in at. And I'm trying to think because we're going to have a breast hook on here. Um, yeah, actually, this this mark may turn out to be all right because. We're going to have a breast hook on here. We're going to have a inner solid rail on here. Then we're going to have a cap coming in here. But probably the cap isn't going to be running underneath the stem. So yeah, this mark may be a little bit high, but whatever. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> when we come to putting everything else on. Uh, but the ideal is if you can notch the stem and have the stem actually hanging out tight, tightly notched over the... Um... Okay, so here's the line we're going to, the, the gain below us. And the, so the highest I can get with this plank is about here. So I'll cut that line, and then we'll use the, um, the rabbiting plane to get right in tight to that, uh, to that notch that I, you know, the line that I cut. Uh, we could also use a chisel. That would work. But we'll use some sort of a we can't use a plane to get in there because the plane stand a regular plane stands off from the body of the uh, and see it's at a slight down angle here with the, with the plank. So I want to use that plank to kind of and uh, I can probably even get a clamp on that to hold that plank in place so that I'll get as close to the angle as possible. So I will check how the rest of the gain is meeting up, which looks pretty good to me. If I can, you know, when I nail this thing in, I'm going to be able to put enough twist in it, I think, to get that to uh, close up nice and tight. Now, as long as I don't put the clamp right in the way of where I need to saw. flat to the and I'm just cutting the same marks that I cut when I beveled the transom back in what um, last May or something so and that's that's it so if this were down further this if this corner were down further 
Gosh, it looks like the stem would almost hang right out over the um, the plank. But anyway, the, the idea is to notch it in and then set the plank in tight to it. So, got that cut. Now I can remove the clamp. And, yeah, okay, so do we want to use a chisel or do we want to... A chisel on that to start. Nice little chisel here. Little chill. Mm. It's probably going to be easier if I go in this direction. Wow, yeah, it's narrow. It's not even uh, wide enough for. I have to get a narrower chisel. <laughs> I know I got one here someplace. Or maybe it's in the other shop. Oh, here it is. Yeah, see. Yeah, because so on a, uh, like say a bank story, yeah, it's interesting. So I have yet to cut this angle in the stem on a, on an alpha, on a bank, on a banks or even another typical swamp skit, these planks would be wider up at the uh, stem, not as tapered and fine as these ones are. All right, so it looks like that's, uh, that's notched out for enough. And uh, yeah, we can lay that plank right in there now. Might even take down this uh, <coughs> take that take this down a bit. Uh, actually, I want to put a little bit of I want to clean up the bottom of this plane a bit before I use it. Yeah, this thing. I don't know what happened to this thing, but. It rusted up big time. It's a change of season in the shop, so we've had a lot of like warm and cold. Like I say, it's been real moist, but this one little uh, low angle block plane just rusted up like crazy. So. Um, Yeah, I'll get some fine sandpaper and clean this up before we get it all over the boat. All right, so yeah, just a uh, turned into a bit of a rabbit trail. I ended up going and cleaning up several other tools, but back to this little block plane. Um, just a quick uh, sand with, I had, had some uh, 800 grit. Got some 1200 grit someplace, but uh, yeah, the 800 wasn't too abrasive. So just a quick sand on the bottom of the plane and then hit it with uh, some uh, paste wax, carnauba wax or whatever. And um, yeah, that'll seal it against uh, against the uh, the weather 
the bottoms of the planes are kind of the most vulnerable because oil doesn't stay on them because they're constantly in contact with the wood surfaces that you're cutting. So, um, so anything that's on the bottom of them will get wiped off. The wax tends to last a little longer and uh, probably uh, helps with the, you know, it helps the plane slide along anyway. So as long as it's on there, it's actually a positive. Um, Take this, take this down and down a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm planing along the gain below it and then out past and, uh, and actually planing the, um, the plank that's coming in on the other side. So I'm kind of being careful not to split out any wood on that other plank. Because I'm going across the end grain, which is why I needed to use this little low angle block plane for that. There's no nails in this edge yet because I'll put a nail through both this plank and that plank. When I'm, when I'm uh, nailing it down. Right, let's see how that's got it. and the rivets will pull this plank in. It's nice and tight against the one below it. And uh, I actually could drop that clamp there a tiny bit. Not a lot though. And that'll actually allow this to come in a tiny bit flatter. Excuse me. Yeah, it looks good though. That's a good fit there. So we'll do the uh, same for the other side. And then we'll be ready to uh, hang some plank. This one's going to be the first to go on. So, yeah, getting close. Very close. You can see just uh, you, know, you can kind of get the feel now for just what a powerful hull this is going to be. Um, yeah, you know, fair amount of freeboard, so you can get her laid over with a with the sails up and not take water on. This final plank really adds a lot of volume to the hull. But then uh, her shear is also low enough where if you got a, you know, a couple of guys in here, you'll be able to row against uh, most wind. You know, maybe not a hurricane, but pretty much anything else. So anyway, yeah. Exciting and... Uh, and I'll see you next episode. Thanks for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. 
a uh, massive thank you to everyone who's liked, commented, subscribed, and uh, sent along cookies and everything else. Uh, yeah, the uh, project wouldn't be possible without your support. And uh, Happy New Year to all. See ya.